sports seem like an unlikely fit for former National Football League and Major League Baseball player E.J. Dozier. He wore a corrective bar between his legs and feet to change the way they were growing as a child. With fierce determination, along with his parents' refusal to accept defeat, Dozier went on to be one of the rare two-sport professional athletes in history. In his book, Decide to Dominate, Dozier shares how he overcame his personal challenges and how he transferred success from one endeavor to another. All right, DJ joins us now. Welcome. Thank you. Corrective shoes as a young boy, and then you wind up a two-sport pro athlete. How does that possibly happen? Good parenting. <laughs> it's the parent. My parents. Well, you know, my parents had overcome quite a bit, uh, even as teenagers. And I believe that the, that, you know, tenacity and that obstinance is what uh, they transferred to me. And so, the, you know, no matter what obstacle, uh, you have to overcome it. So what approach did they take? I mean, a lot of kids might have wanted to give up on certainly athletics. What was special about the way they raised you? Well, I think, number one, they didn't baby me. Uh, I mean, they were concerned, but definitely didn't, you know, give me the, the opportunity to think that I could not achieve something. I mean, I can remember having conversations with both my parents, and no matter what the conversation was about, whether it was academics, you know, school, or, mm -hmm. you know, any other uh, subject, it was, there was always a way to accomplish something greater. Which isn't surprising, I guess, considering the legacy in your family of leadership and entrepreneurship. Tell us a little about that. So, you know, and back in, in history. It goes way back. It goes case. way back. Uh, you know, and I'm, of course, I don't know where, that's, where it started, but I do know where my parents are today. I mean, both on both sides of the family, uh, very entrepreneurial. And, um, I mean, my mom, even to this day, is looking for opportunities in business. And so, you know, that, again, that was passed down to my, myself and my sisters. Uh, we can't help ourselves but to, you know, live a life of entrepreneur. I mean, even right now, I'm, I work for a company that, that's a startup. And, uh, you know, it, so it's, it's, it's just a progression that, uh, that was undeniable, I think, again, beginning way back. I'm not sure exactly when it started. And we're going to talk about your book in a moment, Decide to Dominate. Um, but this young boy who really overcame a lot just to play sports winds up scoring the winning touchdown in the national championship game. What's that feeling like? Tremendous. Uh, but what's interesting is, you know, it was a little history. I mean, that, that team, you know, went through a lot to get to that point. Uh, we had lost the championship the year before that. A lot of folks don't realize that or remember that. But it was a commitment through a bunch of guys that came together and said, you know what, we're going to put ourselves in this position again. And, and we did. And, of course, I ended up, ended up scoring the winning touchdown. But I think even more than that, uh, it was an opportunity to give, give God glory. And uh, you know, I'm so thankful for that. Did you anticipate having a career in the NFL? I was hoping. Um, you, you know, you went to a school like Penn State. And what was interesting is it was about my sophomore year when I started seeing some of the guys I played with that went from Penn State. And all of a sudden, they were in the NFL. And I thought, my goodness, uh, I'm only three steps away. And uh, so I started believing that I actually could uh, play there. But how about, I mean, it's incredible. You know, we talked about these two sport athletes and pro sports and how rare it is. You're running back in the NFL, and I love the part of your book when you talk about how you started to find yourself getting into pro baseball. How did that happen? Just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> that easy? I, I, it started there. Uh, and, you know, that's how powerful thought is. Uh, matter of fact, I remember walking into our house, and I had four of the roommates uh, back at Penn State, and they were watching the Pittsburgh Pirates play. And I thought out loud. I said, oh, I, I can do that. And they sort of turned around and said, what do you mean, do what? And I said, play baseball. And they sort of snickered. How long had it been since you played competitive baseball? Well, at that time, it had been high school, so that was four years. Uh, but then three years later, <laughs> incredible. Uh, I actually saw them in the stadium after I had played a game against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And we all sort of laughed and giggled and said, man, you told us this three years ago. And here you are. It's unbelievable. Your book's called Decide to Dominate, uh, which is interesting because you're a humble guy. And I know your approach is very biblical. The term dominate can kind of sound aggressive and abrasive. What do you mean by it? That, you know, great question. And I didn't think about that in, in the beginning when this came out. But, you know, this was a message, I believe, that came from heaven. Uh, I woke up one morning with those words. And when I started studying part of it, it, you know, go back to the Bible. I mean, God does say, take dominion. And so th there's a correlation there. I mean, it's a birthright. So dominating is part of our birthright as Christians and believers. Um, do you think people, do we too often just look at the obstacles we're up against and the reasons why we can't 
succeed. One of the things I tell my son who's an aspiring athlete is don't be afraid to succeed. It's not like I really speak from experience in athletics, but I see him sometimes in the approach. I just want to remind him, don't be afraid to succeed. Why do you think sometimes, not just in sports, but in our professional life, we don't really have tenacity sometimes? Great question. Uh, you know, I think sometimes we, we just allow uh, anything. I mean, let's face it, sometimes we think we need permission from someone else to be successful. And so we look for opportunities not to be. And, you know, I, I think when we free ourselves and realize, I don't need anyone's permission. God placed me here for a reason or a purpose. I have significance because he gave me purpose. And now with that mindset, you can go out and achieve anything. And any obstacle uh, really becomes a little bump in a hill or a little bump in the road. And I guess sometimes, too, we take it on ourselves that success is just for me. But really, one thing your book talks about is leading uh, with influence. What do you mean by that? So all of us have the capacity to influence or be influenced. I mean, imagine being influenced by the Most High. Uh, so when you're influenced by uh, the Spirit of God, I mean, you, the, on the other side of that influence is success, is overcoming, is dominance. How are you influenced by a relationship with Christ? I mean, Christ is everything. Um, I mean, when I, I realized long, a long time ago that, you know, for years I, I played football, I played sports, and that was all that I loved. When I realized that that I needed more in life, um, you know, and I grew up in a Christian home. So, you know, it wasn't until I walked around campus uh, my junior year trying to figure out what was missing in my life. Um, when I realized that it was a true relationship with the Lord, meaning a one on one, not just going to church, not just praying, not just uh, reading my Bible, but actually having a relationship that changed everything. Mm. You just felt that emptiness in your soul. It was, it was complete emptiness. And again, football was everything to me. Um, so when I came to the conclusion that football couldn't be mm. what it was in my life, and not that I needed to get rid of it, but I just needed to place it in its priority. What do you most want people to take away from your book? Uh, number one, that uh, they count. Mm. Uh, you know, that, that, you know it, it, they, not only do they count, but they have the power to decide. And, and, you know, God gave us that birthright. So if they understand that it's their decision, then all you have to do is say yes. Amen. Well, the book is called Decide to Dominate, and it's available now wherever books are sold. Thanks so much for being with us. Great Thank stuff. You. Absolutely.